In this video, we're going to cover how to import custom 3D models like this car and location scan into CineTracer 2. This requires the use of a free third-party program called Blender. So I'm going to exit the camera here. This is our new uh, larger stage, and I'm going to show you how to use this new import workflow to get these models in here. So here we are in Blender, and let's go over the absolute basics of getting files into CineTracer from here. To start, we're only officially supporting meshes like this. So we're going to delete this camera. We're going to delete this light. We don't want groups. We don't want skeletons. All we want is meshes. However, we can have as many meshes as we want, and we can have as many textures as we want and materials as we want, which is a huge upgrade from the old importer from CineTracer 1. So let's start with something simple like this cube here. So one thing is that Blender is in meters, uh, I believe, is its default metric. So this cube, I believe, is about one meter by one meter. Um, when you import an object, wherever you put this object relative to this uh, origin here, this crosshair uh, of these two axes, that will be like the center of the object. So if you wanted this to be, if you wanted the center of the object to be kind of at the floor, you would do something like this. And there's lots of precise ways of snapping it and whatnot. But um, this is kind of the basics of getting 3D models into a game engine, or in this case, CineTracer. And I'm going to shift A and then add, where's the monkey? Where is that monkey? There it is. Okay, great. Let's bring in the Suzanne monkey. And this is probably a good start here. So what we want at the end of the day is just a list of meshes. They can be in a collection, but they can't be in... Actually, I don't know in Blender, but like you don't want groups or any nulls or anything like that. I think inside a collection is fine. And ultimately, we're just going to select both of these objects, and we're going to go to File, Export, and we're going to use GLTF2 here. These files should be in your My Documents folder, and the CineTracer folder should exist. If it doesn't, um, the game should be creating one for you, but if not, create it yourself. Uh, and then you're going to want to, again, hand create a folder called GLTF underscore. So this is where you have to put these files uh, for this to work. Um, and then we're going to change the format here to GLTF embedded, which is a really convenient format for textures and stuff like that. It kind of packages them all together. We'll see that I have several tests here to make sure that things are working. And let's call this Blender Monkey 1. We can technically bring in skeletal meshes and animations and whatnot, but I really need to go through the workflow and make sure that I can kind of, sort of give some basic guidelines for like what's actually supported. The only thing we need to look at here is I would recommend using selected objects and then actually selecting the objects that you want in case you have a lot in your scene. Uh, other than that, we should be fine. This is going to bring in materials and whatnot, and we're going to hit export GLTF. So let's keep this scene open. We're going to be back here. So I'm in CineTracer 2 061 where this first GLTF, GLTF importer was uh, implemented, and let's create a new project. I'm going to call this a monkey and create, and we're headed inside of our level. So here we are in stage A, I'm gonna hit E to go to editor, and let's click this new import button. You'll see a bit of a file browser. Let's go and click on our Blender Monkey one here, and we're gonna click import. Now, this actually brings up an interesting problem, but it did import it, and I'm inside of it. Let's see if we can escape it. We can, excellent. So here is our scene. For some reason, our monkey doesn't have a texture. Uh, that is something that is going to happen, especially if you're trying to download 3D models and whatnot. Uh, Unreal Engine is very precise in what it wants, and then Blender is also very precise in it wants, and we have to match those two together. But not too bad. Uh, to start here, we've got a white cube, and we have our monkey head imported in. So that is the general workflow. Uh, let's head back to Blender and see if we can alter some of these materials, though, and see how that's going to be interpreted in CineTracer 2. So we're back here. And while they're both gray, I believe what's happening is this monkey has no material. It does not. So this is a good time to create a new one. And we're going to want to use the principled uh, BSDF, which is kind of the default one. This importer that I use can handle other ones, but to start, I would recommend here. So now that it has a material, we can do something like pick its color. And what's going on? I can't see anything. We need to change to uh, this shading mode here. So this we'd expect to be uh, yellow. 
And this one down here, uh, its material, let's change it to be, oh, let's change it to be blue like that. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and select the same exact model again. We're gonna do export GLTF, and we're gonna want to toggle this back and forth. That's just kind of ha what happens right now. And we'll do Blender Monkey number two. And shouldn't it be a problem? Shouldn't it be overriding? We'll see. We're going to export. And it's a tiny model. Really good. Very small. This is excellent. So here we are back in Cinetracer 2. And I'm going to move this monkey over there. I'm going to not stand where it's going to spawn, which is like roughly there. Go to import. And let's do Blender Monkey number two. And there it is. So now we actually have a material on this. That is very nice. We can grab the little yellow dot and look at our other, uh, our other more textured monkey here, or at least it has a, a material on it. So let's head back to Blender and we're going to keep kind of experimenting. So we're back in Blender and like, so what if we want to change some uh, materials about this? Like what if we want to make this metal? So I'm going to roll the metallic all the way up. And then I'm going to take our roughness, which where are we hanging out roughness? Where is roughness? Clear coat roughness. Uh, there it is. Okay. So the lower this number, the shinier it is. That's like metallic. You can see that this object is very um, faceted. It's not very smooth. So it's not like a smooth uh, effect getting on. But this is essentially full metal to Unreal Engine. So uh, that requires a lot of like reflection calculations. It's a little bit tough for it. So... I'm gonna go ahead and put the roughness at like a little bit blurry or something like this. So it's kind of like a blurry metal. And then the one down here, uh, if I don't want it to be metal, but more like plastic, I'm gonna just leave the metallic off and I'm gonna bring the roughness down below 0.4 technically. And I'm actually gonna send it to zero. So this is kind of now like a blue plastic and this is kind of like a shiny metal gold kind of. I'm just going to change the color here so it's a little bit more clear. And if we pick a darker color, even um, maybe like green, certainly not dark. Let's just do like red and I can bring the value down here. Something like this. So it's kind of like a dark plastic cube and a shiny uh, gold metallic monkey to some degree here. And let's go ahead and export again. Let's just do this workflow over and over again. Me and you, I'm still learning how this is working. <laughs> Um, we're going to toggle this back to GLTF embedded, very important. And here we are doing monkey number three and export. Back in Cinetracer 2, let's get our third monkey and see how the materials have gone. Imports, there is no process loading bar here. Um, so you're just going to kind of see if it worked. And if it's a big file, which you'll see in a minute, you're, it's going to hang and you have to wait for a little while, depending on the size of the model number of textures and how fast your computer is. So here we are with our uh, third iteration. And what will be helpful is if we actually grab a light like this. Um, these space lights are very particular light in Unreal Engine, and it really works well to have um, something uh, like this for a light source, the ones from the library, in addition to see reflections and whatnot. So we're we'll just going to drag this uh, overhead here and do some brightness like this. So there's our three monkeys. We have the untextured one if there's no material, then we made it blue and then uh, yellow. And then we changed uh, some of the roughness. So now this is very reflective. You can see the reflections of the space lights. And this one's metallic and slightly less reflective, but it's still giving that sort of like metal effect. Uh, there are many, many things that happen in materials. Uh, I'll just say that much. And just feel free to experiment in Blender when you change like emissive and transparency. How does that look in Cinetracer 2? And I'd love to see results. I can't test like infinitely here. Uh, it is different than like the normal workflow I use to make 3D assets for the game. Um, but for the runtime importing, this is pretty powerful now because we can have multiple materials uh, compared to Cinetracer 1. So next, let's look at processing some kind of more difficult uh, objects, something like a location scan you'd get from like Polycam um, and look at like just some of the different things that you'll uh, end up encountering online. So here I am on Sketchfab. I've searched free and I'm going to go to places and travel and there's a great location scan by as here. There it is right there. 
uh, that I've been testing and he makes great location scans. I've been using his scans like for a very long time for my work. Let this load in. Do note how long that took uh, Sketchfab to load those textures in. These textures are not small. Uh, but this is something you'd very commonly get from some sort of photogrammetry app like Polycam, Reality Capture. And the one thing I want to point out and say over and over again is that this is four 4K textures. That's a lot. That is a lot to load in if your computer is not like a full workstation. I'll just say that much. You want to have like one or two like 1K textures. And this is for like the more modest computers. If you have a PC workstation, huge graphics card, you do 3D um you're pro you're going to be fine with this but just just so you know if you see four 4k textures that's a red flag that is kind of big in this case so let's go ahead and download this model here we're going to bring in the original format we cannot uh we cannot consistently import directly from a website like this a gltf or a glb technically we can but it will crash i have no idea what kind of grouping and like weird stuff this program has done and this importer that I use cannot handle, um, let's just say, weird stuff. We need to have a very specific um, 3D format uh, coming in. I'm going to show you how to kind of like look at this file in Blender. So again, let's go ahead. If I didn't already, uh, let's download the OBJ file is what you're going to want. We're also going to look at this car. Wouldn't this be amazing to get this car in the game? It has a lot of parts, but it did work pretty well. So I'm going to use it as a demo. Um, if you search this name, you'll probably find it. And there's lots of cars for free. So if you like cars, let's go get some cars. We're going to again, go download. And in this case, it's an FBX. So you're going to go want to go with something. If you can, if they have it, something like an OBJ FBX, even a straight blend file, um, because their shaders are going to come in, uh, the best way. We could use all these other formats, but there's a lot of work in Blender to kind of like change the, the shaders around. So these two I found work really well. So I'm in my downloads folder. And again, this stuff is buried real deep down here. We're gonna take this OBJ file and hit import. Uh, we're gonna immediately see that, oh, there it goes. <laughs> it takes a little while for the textures to load in. Uh, note how long that took on in Blender. Uh, we're going to see that this file is on its side, so to speak. And that is completely fine. We're going to want to just hit our rotate tool over there. And they have a much better rotate gizmo than I have in Cinetracer 2. <laughs> I'm still working on it. Uh, we want to get this um, so that it's normal here. So that like Z is up in this case. And we want this to um, be like you would want it in Cinetracer. So we'll grab this and just like roughly center it. And that is it. We are all set here. Um, to be safe, I'm going to click this object. We're going to go to object and we're going to go to, um, where is this? This always takes me a second. Oh, apply. There it is. Sorry. And we're going to want to do all transforms. So just apply all transforms on all the objects once they're where you like them. And so this one is complicated. And if I went and downloaded 10 different models off of Sketchfab, you would get 10 different types of materials. There's, it's just an absolute free for all 3D formats and materials and whatnot. Uh, this one looks pretty good. And again, we're looking for ones that immediately come in as principal BSDF. That is the most consistent uh, behavior. Uh, that is the most consistent type of material and surface type that we can get from Blender 2, uh, Cinetracer 2 in a consistent way. If it's something different, which happens again all the time, uh, you can try it, you can try switching it. Um, and it's a bit of an experiment going back and forth to see what happens. I would recommend trying to get models that just turn into the default one. So this one's extra spicy because it came from photogrammetry. This is set up with UDIMs, which is well beyond the scope to talk about what that is. But anyway, if we looked at the UVs and all this other stuff, there's, there's a lot going on. But uh, let's just show that this scan actually works really well. The main thing is make sure that there's no lights, they're not in groups, that it's just a mesh and you're gonna select it. So just the meshes for now. We're going to go to export uh, GLTF2 again, and we're going to toggle to the GLTF embedded. We're in our Cine documents, Cinetracer GLTF uh, file here. And I've done this scan several times to test it, but let's do this again. We're going to say location scan uh, two. I already have, I've already been testing this one. So let's do this again. You'll see that that takes a little while to export. Those textures are pretty big. So here we are back in Cinetracer 2, and let's move these cubes just like over here. 
Do you select them? I'm going to move away from the center of the map because that's where this thing is going to spawn. We're going to click import and let's go to, where did it go? Location scan two. So importantly, this is big. This has four 4K textures. It's a lot of polys. This is going to take a while depending on your computer. If you have a modest computer, it may never happen. It just may never import. It's too much for your RAM, your graphics card. It's just too much, especially I've heard people trying to bring in like 10 gigabyte location scans. You have to have a massive computer to have that work um, and be uh, reliable. On top of that, I'm going to click import and just wait. There is no loading screen for this right now. There's no process loader. You just have to have faith and wait. And if it times out and your computer is like freezes, it's most likely you're bringing in something massive. It's just like too big for the system. Uh, but there is no loading screen for this at the moment. But see that my computer handled this okay. We can grab the little yellow dot, spin it around, and there is our location scan as we uh, would expect. It's a perfect one. I did kind of cherry pick a great location scan, uh, GG as who made this. And I picked one that, again, was all principled BSDF coming in, and it works great. If you see unlit, you start to see different funny UV things happening. You would have to fix that on your own to get it into this kind of like clean state. But here's um, here is a location scan that someone did with a, probably a, like a DSLR, but you could do with your phone these days. So here's the BMW. We go in source. We go in here. And here's our FBX in this case. And I'm going to import. And if I remember correctly, this thing has a lot of textures on it. Look how long it took Blender to load. I have a very fast computer. That was, that took a second. <laughs> um, if you're not seeing material previews, you're going to want to um, switch from this or whatever you're in. Oh boy, that's heavy. Look how heavy this mesh is. This thing's pretty massive. Um, again, you're going to go to like, go to here. So... Something to keep in mind is that this is a lot of meshes. So again, if you're going to attempt an import like this, this is way more parts than actually the cars I bring in are pretty decent, but this is a lot of parts. You might want to consider if you have the time and your computer's like failing the import, consider deleting stuff in here you don't need, like all this like um, stuff on the bottom and just carefully go through and be like, you know what? I don't need that. I'm going to delete that, right? And so this takes a long time, but again, if your computer can't import a model this uh, expensive with this many parts, then that is something you're going to have to do. Uh, while this does have an absolutely large amount of um, parts on it, that's actually fine. Uh, what we want to look is the materials. And we are, again, very nice coming in from importing an FBX or an OBJ of a good asset from wherever, uh, is that Blender will treat it and bring it in as this default shader, which is how Cinetracer wants to see it. Um, having tested this before, I know that this glass isn't great and we have to start to look at like, I'm not sure that we actually support sheen tint and stuff like that. Um, but this is full metal. I'm going to turn off clear coat roughness and transmission would be like kind of make it transparent, but it's not the best transparent material to be honest. Um, but this is pretty good here. Another thing you could consider doing is just deleting the glass out if you're okay, like seeing into the car, like if you wanted to like film into this car or something like that, um, you might want to just delete the glass. And now you could like put someone in here um, and like see what's going on. Wow, look at the interior is very detailed. So let's see how kind of wild uh, an import this one is. It's a pretty heavy mesh, but the de everything's in there. You can just click the seats, start, you know, changing all the materials. But I will just say that this is a very heavy object <laughs> for, for Cinetracer 2 to import. And make sure, again, let me look at this. It's not in any groups. There's no lights. There's no cameras. We can only, for now, reliably select meshes like this, static meshes. I don't know why the plane's not selected, but let's just give this a shot here. And we're going to go File, Export, GLTF. And again, we're going to switch it to GLTF Embedded. And I called this one last time Cart, I think. So let's call this Car. <laughs> five, something like that. And we're exporting. It's taking a while. There's a lot of little textures in this one, but that's why everything like looks so nice. So uh, let's import our final model here. And we're going to go to import here. And we just did car number five. This might take a little bit depending on your computer. It might crash depending on if everything went well. <laughs> it's kind of a big process happening behind the scenes. I'm going to click import. We're going to wait. I think the system should freeze up at a certain point, but we'll get it back. Oh, there it is. Maybe it came back later. 
Um, and there's our car. So pretty impressive results, actually. I'm pretty happy with this one. Uh, we can just drag it in. I'm kind of recreating the beginning scene, except we have the Suzanne monkey <laughs> in here, too. So it seems even better than the intro one. Just put these back here as props. Uh, it's likely I'll allow scaling on these objects. Um, typically, I don't, I don't like scaling. Most of the things, like some of the rigs, stop working if you scale them. But for importing, it's pretty important, especially if the scale was wrong. But again, you can head to Blender or scale it there. But I mean, look at all the detail in this model. Pretty cool. Little, not my favorite car shader, but considering it's straight out of Blender, it's pretty good. Look at the interior. Very detailed. Um, what is not as controllable, or I need to look at the workflow, is things like collisions. Technically, we can import skeletal meshes, but like what skeletons are going to do well, what types of animation, what frame rate. There's just, it's a, it's basically game development at that point. You're, you're, you're building assets the same way I do, but we're going to have possibly undesired rota uh, um, collisions and whatnot. The doors don't necessarily open. This isn't, this isn't rigged or anything like that. We can't runtime change the materials, but again, do all those changes in Blender and then bring them in here. Uh, and we're going to get some pretty cool results. Um, if you take your time and again, this is uh, heavy on the system. Cinetracer 2 is not a regular DCC like Blender or Unreal Engine. The editor, it is a runtime version. So runtime apps have a harder time importing things like this. Though, however, look how well uh, Unreal Engine 5 and GLTF is working. But it does require a pretty strong computer if you're going to do models like this. Things like this, you just go model something in Blender out of cubes, whatnot. Uh, build your location of the cubes in Blender where there's like really good modeling tools. That's going to come in super easy on pretty much anyone's computer. So that wraps it up. It's kind of a long video, but I wanted to have one video on how to do basic importing into slightly more complicated ones. I will check you on the next video.